Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the correct view. Sam by me, the Ganji, doing political commentary for the media speaks. And uh, what is I gotta ask before I get in? It is time, of course, for the dunce cab of the month award. I we all see it on the mind of its own. Dunce cap of the month award. Let me ask you something uh, before we get into it. What the hell have they done to contact lens solution within the last few years? Look at this. No, I'm not stoned. That'd be both eyes. Like, it looks like the eye of death. Um, I'm going to have to get like an all natural one. And I say that because I'm going to wear these. These are the Buddy Puff sunglasses, which is normally what I do when I'm doing its fictional character. This is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award that is very much not Buddy Puff. It is Sam McGangie with a very red eye. Uh, anybody listening, let me know if the all-natural stuff works to get rid of that, because I never had this problem before. Friends, um, we're going to get directly into the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and we're going to do so by pointing out the insanity of Wisconsin Public School. Because they are going to spend nearly $500,000 on Black Lives Matter. What do you need to know? They wake up every morning looking for a new way to be a victim. Am I saying that black people historically have never been held down? No, of course they have. Oftentimes by their own people. Um, but again, I, this whole race thing needs to go. There's one right race, race, if I can say it. One race, and that'd be the human race. We're arguing about pigment color here. And there have been times throughout history when white people have been unbelievably wrong as a whole group. It looks like there are a certain segment of black people who are being very wrong as a group. What we're seeing here is reverse prejudice. They, the Black Lives Matter movement, I don't mean black people, this particular people that align with this movement, wake up every day looking for a new way to be a victim. Well, now they're doing it with half a million dollars on a program aligned with the Black Lives Matter program. I'm going to go to screen share because I'm frightened that if I don't, you won't even believe it's true. And this isn't even, trust me, the stories get dumber and dumber as we go. But this is a good start when you realize Black Lives Matter, if you a newspaper. You take the newspaper to the school and you teach what Black Lives Matter is. You don't need to spend half a million dollars of people's taxpayer money. Right? Yeah, I guess you do. A line ad I'm indicating $471,073 to be spent on a pilot partnership program with Black Lives Matter. They were indoctrinate with a cultural studies curriculum and encourage cultural responsive teaching practices and teach people about the trauma informed care and issues surrounding race trauma faced in communities and neighborhoods. And the community is going to have a chance to protest it. They should protest it. Look, we, we know how to buy a newspaper. We have the internet in school, don't we? Do we not have the internet in school? You can teach Black Lives Matter. You can teach it from whichever side you want. Point is, you don't need someone spending half a million dollars to teach you how to read a newspaper. And that includes if you are a member of Black Lives Matter. Um, again, my problem with them isn't that I don't think Black Lives Matter. Um, some people within that group do not believe that every life is sacred, and that bothers me. Um, are there scum of the earth? How many of you watch Walking Dead? I do all the time. Uh, how many of you... Uh, you watch it, you know, the, the, what was the guy with the, the guy with the Aikido, the really cool guy. Um, he was saying all lives matter. Okay, you know, there are some lines that maybe lies do not matter so much. But for the most part, all of us matter. Whiteies, crackers like me, black people, Asians, guess what? We're all here for some purpose. Don't ask me what that is. I have absolutely no idea what my purpose is. I, I'll find out when I die. I've never known while I was alive. But the point is, somebody put you here. Um, and you know, this, this one Asian lives matter, Hindu lives matter. How about we all matter so that we can focus on how government is screwing all of us. How about that? But no, according to Paul Joseph Watson, prison planet, whiteness history speaker says that whites owe blacks $20 trillion in reparations. Now that makes me wonder how much does Africa owe 
black America because a lot of people don't know this. There were a number of people, white scum, that stole black people from their homelands. But that wasn't by and large. Um, American whitey wasn't all that great of a sailor, to be quite honest, and laugh at my own race. What was happening in many instances is the elite in Africa were selling the lower classes out of Africa. In other words, black people were selling black people. They were doing it based on class, not color. And then it ended up, so this was willfully done. And they didn't just sell their fellow black men to America. They sold them over just about every country that they could get away with that was doing such things at the time. Um, thankfully, white people with a conscience ended it. You never hear that. Okay, you never hear, you only hear about the awful white people. It automatically assumes that everybody that's alive that's white now suddenly would have been in favor of working a person to death. That's that's insulting. But it says, video has emerged of a speaker in Portland Community College Whiteness History Month asserting that whites owe blacks $20 trillion in reparations for slavery. The white speaker, whose identity remains unknown, states that white people owe reparations, but not only for the enslavement of Africans. They owe reparations for the ongoing colonialization of Africans in the United States. I'm sorry, that is simply BS. I don't remember a time that I've never gone to school with people of color, worked with people of color. I don't remember any place I've ever worked at wanting to only work with one race. Um, I can understand not wanting certain cultures. No, you probably don't want a violent redneck in your club. You probably don't want somebody with their pants sagging and with a gun in their hand. White or black, it's probably a bad idea. But in terms of people, people dislike cultures, but most people don't like other don't dislike other people for the color of their skin. Now, it said the facts completely contradict what this race baiting narrative says. Because whites living today are responsible for slavery in the United States. He says all white people sit at the pedestal of oppression of Africans. All white people have benefited from the accumulated value of the slave trade, she adds. Excuse me, I said he. Claiming that white people are responsible for the ongoing murder and oppression of African Americans. Now, Paul Joseph Watson does an excellent job here, and I'm going to quote what he says. American blacks enjoy the highest standard of living of any black population on the planet, earning an average per capita income that's between 20 to 50 times higher than the African countries from where they were displaced. Does that mean that their families should have been sold into slavery? No. It's just fact that we don't, by and large, think that way, nor should we. Um, throughout history, virtually every race has been involved in slavery. The Islamic slave trade murdered over 112 million blacks and was far more brutal and lasted far longer than the slave trade did in America. More whites were abducted and enslaved by Muslims than the number of blacks enslaved by whites. In the U.S., only 1.4%, less than 2 out of 100, 1.4% of whites owned slaves at the peak of slavery, compared to 28% of free blacks who owned slaves. In other words, the free blacks were owning more slaves per capita than the white people. Want to know what whites did? It wasn't me. My country was probably somewhere between Sicily and starving in Ireland at the time. Um, look up the Papa family. Um, we probably weren't even here. If we were, we were poor. The people who were owning slaves were probably the early what, Rockefellers. I don't know. Maybe. Who are the plantation owners that have moved on and opened up big corporations today? And guess what? It wasn't your name and my last name. Um, you could, even if you were immoral enough to want to back then, you usually weren't able to afford it. Only 6% of the 10 to 15 million African American, excuse me, Africans transplanted from the New World ended up in America. The vast majority of them went to South America. 
South America owned more slaves than North America did at the time. Whites were the first in the world to end the slave trade. White people were the first to encourage everyone else in the world to end the slave trade. And lastly, slavery was ended in the West as a result of the sacrifice of hundreds of thousands of almost ex exclusively white men. So don't give me this BS that we are racist. There are a lot of us that dislike certain cultures. We'll get to that in a minute. If you're encouraging getting yours at the expense of everybody else, then we probably don't like you. And that isn't color based. Uh, the last we're going to do for it, this is why it's the dumb, D, the dumb cap of the month, the dumbest stories. Uh, one more from PJ Dub. A white person smiling at a black person is a racist microaggression. If it sounds stupid to you, it's because it's stupid. If it doesn't sound stupid to you, then you're likely stupid. <coughs> Students who attended a Whiteness History Month presentation at Portland College coined the term white guy smile while agonizing over whether or not a white person smiling at a black person is a racist microaggression. Now, when I was growing up, and I'm sure unless you grew up on the moon, you were taught that a smile is the easiest way to get to know somebody. You don't have to scowl to not smile, but out of all the facial expressions you can pick, a smile. Now, we live in an age where if you smile at the wrong color, if the person has the wrong pigment of skin and you smile at them, you have committed an act of microaggression against them. Oh my God, where does this stupidity come from? Well, here's one place. The video clip, clip begins with a white student grappling over whether or not to look a person of color in the eyes when he walks past them. Yeah, because, you know, you would look, if you look somebody else in the eyes, then why wouldn't you? This doesn't make any sense. It sounds like this person has a problem that they're trying to paint everybody else with. There's all this stuff wrapped up in how we meet or how we don't meet each other's eyes. Another white female student then discusses how her black relatives will always talk about white guy smile. That awkward smile when they don't know what they're supposed to do. And this goes back to someone thinking something happened to them when in fact it doesn't. Let me, let me explain to you how this happens. Um, you hear African Americans sometimes, not all, I'm not going to paint with the racist brush here. Many times, the people of color, we can say black people here, it's not hateful. I'm a white guy, hello. Um, even though I've got Mexican in me, fine, whatever. Um, there's an issue here. When I was driving taxi, you hear people say, oh, yeah, you know, you know, cab rolled up on me and locked the door as soon as they saw me because I'm black. That's not true. It's because you were human. I could, When I was driving taxi, if there was like a 10-year-old girl on the side of the road, I would still lock the door. She could be a white girl holding a Bible. When you drive taxi, you lock the door for everyone. That is smile that you get is probably the same smile that a white person gets. But because there is this perception of this huge race problem, you just don't see it as such. Here's a national review here. Professor, if you read to your kids, you are unfairly disadvantaging others. I told you, that's cap of the month. They only get stupider as we go. Bedtime story privilege. According to a professor at the Uni of Warwick in England, if only I sent dunce caps overseas, parents who read to their kids should be thinking about how they're unfairly, unfairly disadvantaging other people's children by doing so. In other words, since some parents don't know how to read, if you do know how to read, you should make your kid as stupid as the other parents to help somehow the whole world get dumber. Don't go out of your way to help your neighbor read to their kids. Don't go out of your way to show your neighbor, maybe they're having trouble with the language, how to look up audio books on YouTube. Don't, no, no, just don't read to your kid. 
don't help somebody else just divide it by race and let the person who uh, maybe is from another country and struggles to learn the language don't help their kid get smarter no help yours get dumber in an interview with the abc radio last week philosopher and professor adam swift say <laughs> not very said that since bedtime stories activities do indeed foster and produce desired familiar relationship goods he wouldn't want to ban them well how very white of him but the parents who engage in bedtime story activities should definitely at least feel kind of bad about it sometimes i don't think parents reading their children bedtime stories should constantly have in their minds the way that they are unfairly disadvantaging other people's children but i think they should have thought of it occasionally he also added that other things parents do give their kids the best education possible like sending them to a private school cannot be justified notice he doesn't say maybe you should help your neighbor maybe you should help the disadvantaged no the answer is to make your family as dumb as can be rather than educate your neighbor you know because they might be a different color this is the death of the mind my friends and it gets dumber truth revolt new york column is savage by fellow liberals for suggesting they're intolerant what's funny about this is he says they're intolerant so what they do is reply in a way that proves he was right and that they're totally intolerant. I do it, dunce cap of the month, friends. The moment that the New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof cracked open the door to suggesting that liberals like himself are largely intolerant. So, I mean, he's talking about himself. His liberal readers burst through and trampled him beneath their tolerance. I love the way that's worded. Kristof's op-ed column was entitled A Confession of Liberal Toler Intolerance, and it began like this. We progressives believe in diversity, and we want women, blacks, Latinos, gays, and Muslims at the table uh, as long as they are conservative. You don't believe this? Look, up, Ask Milo, and he'll tell you. Universities are the bedrock of progressive values, but the kind of diversity that universities disregard is ideological and religious. We're fine with people who don't look like us as long as they think like us. So he's right. So what's this? what, what kind of dumbass replies does he get? Much of the conservative worldview consists of ideas that are empirically known to be false. No, that is absolutely not true. There's one lie. The truth has a liberal slant, wrote Michelle. That is equally untrue. Actually, it's usually the conservative look that has the most science behind it. Why stop there? How about we make facilities more diverse by hiring idiots? So what do they hate so much? That the Bible is the literal word of God. Well, it is. You could tell that by the fact that so much of it lines up among people that wrote them centuries apart, especially in the Old Testament. Um, that virgins can have babies. No, that's called a miracle. We don't believe that all virgins have babies. We believe that one did. That's why it's called a miracle. That evolution is not real. We don't believe that. I do believe that things evolve within a species. Uh, you find that the uh, there's a lot of science to support that the peppered moth was a uh, an adaption within the moth species that changed it from a white moth to a peppered colored moth. And the reason this happened was due to pollution. The moth did not become a fish that became a man that became the mighty moon men that live on the moon of green cheese. No, it stayed within the species. So Christians do believe in evolution within the species, micro, not macro. Um, that the Lord works in mysterious ways. Well, I, that's, I don't think anybody's ever called that fact, but whatever. That traditional male domination and misogyny are the answers to society's prayers. That's, that's just babble to make Christians look bad. No one's ever said that. And that greed over people is a respectable life philosophy. No, what we say is that capitalism works the best because it inspires each person to help the others and to succeed. Because to succeed, you have to buy things off of other people. We are not in any way implying that one, one 
person is better than another. We're not the ones out here saying that you shouldn't teach your neighbor to read. You should dumb down your own children. Um, this was interesting. American Mirror. City leader compares American flags on fire trucks to ISIS going to take over a city. It is so stupid that you probably just spilled your latte. Let me do it again. City leader compares American flags on fire trucks to ISIS going to take over a city. This one almost got the dust cap of the month. I'm going to be honest. The fire department administrator thinks American flags waving from the back of trucks looks uh, trucks looks ridiculous and compared it to the actions of ISIS. Yeah, you know, because going to put out your neighbor's fire and risk your life is a lot like capturing a Christian and cutting his head off. You know, they both have flags. Oh, I see it now. They look like a bunch of yahoos, you know. So we all know that ISIS looks like yahoos. ISIS looks like ninjas, but okay. They, they do, I'm sorry. They look like a bunch of ninja wannabes. Um, the fire district chairman, Fred Galinsky, said at Coventry, Rhode Island, firefighters at a recent board meeting, according to News 10, like in the paper, like ISIS in Syria going to take over a city. I don't think they need a big flag on the back of the truck. That's not America to me. They're a bunch of terrorists. And I'm going to ask you to take the flag off the truck. Once again, Grolinski, do you understand where you want to call and complain? In Coventry, Rhode Island, fire district chairman, friend Galinsky. Who sh that's what you should do. You should fire... Fire District Chairman Fred Galinsky. What an idiot. I swear. What an absolute moron. Uh, Dailymail.co.uk. They're always on the show. BBC News. Uh, the, well, you know the channel. I'm sorry. BBC says it airs too much Christian content and should produce more shows for Muslims, Hindus, and Sikhs. Never mind that the... Church of England is the most historically Christian church in the West, except possibly, you could argue, Rome. But I, I, I don't even have time to give you a whole history lesson as to as this is so stupid, but it is a good shot. We have torn down the walls of Europe. And as such, the peaceful nation of Sweden now leads the world in rapes. Due to unvetted Muslim extremism, we can't tell who the good people and the bad people are there. Well, the BBC has the answer. They've accused itself of being excused itself of being too Christian in its output, and is considering scrapping some long-running programs in favor for Muslim, Hindu, and Sikh audiences. Yeah, like how to cut off a head 101. Aquil Ahmed, the broadcaster's head of religion and ethics, compiled a report following consultation with non-Christians who expressed their belief that the BBC is disappropriated in its religious content. Now, I'm not in favor of banning anything. That'll be more important here when we get to the end. I'm not in favor of that at all. But I think it's important to point out that you can't draw, draw Mohammed. Somebody had a fit. But you can pretty much make fun and be little Christians any way you want to. And that's perfectly okay. Now the very countries to whom are great because of their Christian fundamental heritage are going to betray it for a religious equality when many people of this other religion have no desire to do anything but bring harm to the existing institution. That doesn't make any sense. The feeling is that while there are plenty of shows that celebrate Christianity, there are too few of other faiths. A BBC director, General Lord Hall, has been handed a dossier and is believed to be giving thorough consideration to suggestions. It comes after last week's white paper on the BBC order to the broadcaster to offer more for ethnic minorities. In a statement provided by the Sunday Times, Ahmed said Christianity remains the cornerstone of our output and there are some hours dedicated to it for other faiths. 
As it stands, religious programming across the BBC includes the likes of uh, Songs of Prey. It goes on to say who they were. But when quizzed on whether the aim of increasing non-Christian output would come at the determinant of Christian souls, the spokesman said Christianity remains the cornerstone of our output. And the BBC is committed to doing a wide range of, in other words, dumping the Christian shows that people are actually watching to convert people into Islam so that they will accept the influx of people that are trying to destroy their culture coming in unvetted. The BBC dunce cap. Oh my God. I've got it's a few stories to get to, and they're all brought to you by Sticker Junkie. Now, the dumbest of the month, the true, absolute, hands down idiot dumbdy stories of the month here are coming up. I just want to let you know, Sticker Junkie, that you're going to see here on screen share. Sticker Junkie is going to set you up beautifully, friend. You're going to get your stickers. They're going to look amazing like the ones that you're looking at here. And then on checkout, type in correct views or the correct views, and you're going to get even more of a savings because you're a listener of the show. My friend, this is metro.co.uk. People are having sex roulette parties where one person secretly has HIV. Now, you can look up bug chasing sex if you want to be appalled. There were a small number of people doing this like 20 years ago, trying to catch AIDS. AIDS. Well, you're seeing it now become more and more commonplace. And I, friends, I, I'm not a sexually pure person. I admit that. But this here, this is what happens when sexuality goes beyond attraction and into other stupidity and debauchery debauchery there's no other way to put it it's the ultimate you look how that's worded it's the ultimate in extreme sex yeah sure parties where one person secretly has hiv and everyone has unprotected sex without knowing who it is if i would have known where to mail this dunce cap obviously you don't i this would have won this but this, this would hands down be the dumbest story of the year if i knew who to send this to Doctors in Barcelona have claimed that sex roulette parties taking place usually among gay men and that echoes previous reports of such parties among wealthy people in Serbia. The thrill comes from knowing you might be infected. People who claim to have attended such parties say, yeah, you might get a, you might, you might be infected. Isn't that a thrill? You can get cancers and colds. You can never feel good again. You can take upwards to 20 to 25 pills every day that you probably won't be able to afford. You'll have wasting syndrome. You'll lose your eyes. You'll have trouble getting an erection. Doesn't that sound great? My AIDS is wonderful. Fucking moron. Dr. Joseph Malalos of Hospital Clinic Barcelona says that the parties are a sign that people have lost respect for HIV in a report, El Periodico. Morales says that there is every day sex roulette parties or sex parties you can only attend if you already have HIV, in which case there could be more than one. Malas says that some of the parties are known as blue parties because attendees take antiviral medication to cut the risk of transforming the virus. Yeah, why would you want to use a condom? The wealthy organize these sex parties for other rich people. And the real kick for these people is apparently the risk that they might be having sex with an HIV partner. Yes, friends, on purpose. It gets worse. We get dumber. EAG News. Firearm facsimile of school suspends a five-year-old girl over a princess bubble gun now i do these shows so that you will contact the people who have done these ridiculous things that i'm commenting on you will call them and let them know how stupid they are that you do not approve of them being the leaders if you don't do these kinds of things friends and i'm doing the show for nothing okay Brighton, Colorado, the principal of southeast elementary in the adams county school district again the principal at the Southeast Elementary in the Adams County School District, who you're going to want to call and let them know how dumb this is, apparently thinks a clear plastic bubble gun qualifies as a firearm facsimile that could be reasonably mistaken as an actual firearm. 
At least that's what one mother told ABC News after she was forced to pick up her kindergarten daughter, kindergarten, from the school for blowing bubbles with a fake firearm during indoor recess. The girl brought her princess bubble gun to school in her backpack, unbeknownst to her mother, and the principal dropped the hammer with a one-day suspension, and it goes on her permanent record so she could be looked at as a threat when she applies to college. Guys, do I need to say more? The, it goes on. The mother apologized. She she groveled. She needs to put her kid in a private school. If it's called privilege, so be it. But this is ridiculous. District officials refuse to speak to the media. Well, maybe you should call them and see if they'll speak to you. Call them and let them know that this is insanity. Or am I doing the show for nothing? If I'm doing the show for nothing, let me know. Say, hey, Sam, you're doing the show for nothing. Go to hell. Guys, Connor Beck, college fix. College cancels men in literature course. Why? Because it's focused on men. Now, why don't we cancel a women's studies course? Since women's study, yeah, every liberal has the liberal arts degree. I took women's studies, and I am so enlightened. It's why I talk like this and have a butch haircut, because I took women's studies. Why don't we cancel women's studies because it focuses on women too much? No. Men, you can do anything to men. If they're Christians, you can kill them. It's like flying a flag in the back of your truck, I hear. A men in literature course taught successfully for eight years at Springfield College has now been canceled after campus officials complained that the class was too focused men. They are accomplished male writers. The popular humanities department approved course was taught by a Dennis doctor, by the way, Dennis Gowles. Campus leaders prior to axing the course accused the scholar of turning the English class into something of a men's gender class. Well, we have female genders class. Why can't we have male genders class? No. Springfield College friends, contact them. In return, Gals changed the curriculum to please campus leaders' concerns, but to no avail. Today, he accuses campus leaders of uh, playing politics and undermining academic freedom. Faculty members and college administrators should make these decisions on the basis of legitimate educational principles, not ideology, he said to the college fix. The National Association of Scholars is an organization dedicated largely to defending academic freedom has since come to the defense of gals, thank God. This doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. The, what, Shakespeare doesn't matter because he was white? Because he was a guy? Even? This doesn't make any sense. If Martin Luther King was black, you probably should focus on what he wrote, even if he's a man. This is ridiculous. Guys, we got the Dumdy of the day. It has arrived. Uh, let me get the music ready. Oh, yes, the Dumdy music. Are you ready? Happy May Day. Minnesota governor declares May 23rd Beyonce Day because of the singer's powerful, positive messages to women and girls. If I don't go to screen share, you're not going to believe me because this is so stupid. You're not going to believe that it could possibly be real. It is real. Now, I want to say before I get into this that I am not in favor of banning music. I know who the PMRC are. I know how evil they are. I know what they try to do. I get it. I listen to bands that are much worse than Beyonce. My problem with Beyonce is her voice is terrible and nobody wants to hear vocal running. I'm sorry. Drunk in Love, she sounds like Tarzan. It's miserable. Um, her music is an ear sore. It is terrible. Her voice is terrible. Her lyrics take the diction of a lizard. Utter mind rot is my problem with her. It's not that she's necessarily immoral. I get it. It's rock and roll. It's not rock and roll, but it's it's music. I get it. The the bigger problem here is I listen to bands like your know, Combi Christ, Lords of Acid. I don't think Lords of Acid 
even though I like them, like them though I do, Lords of Acid might not be a good role model for your daughter when she's like 10, since they sing about things like anal sex. I don't know. That's unusual, I guess. Minnesota's governor, who wins the Dunce Cap of the Month award, has decided to get information and has declared Monday Beyonce Day in the state ahead of the singer's performance in the Twin Cities. Beyonce Day. The woman who glorifies prostitution who stays with a cheater. Nothing empowers a woman like staying with a cheater. I can't find my dunce cap. I need my dunce cap. Governor Mark Dayton, who wins the dunce cap of the month award, proclaimed May 23rd, 2016 as Beyonce Day because of the singer's influence on many young girls and women with a powerful, positive message in her song. Thank you. Positive message. We'll get to that in a minute. The declaration recognized the 34-year-old Houston singer's success in the music industry. Hitler had a lot of success in the military. That doesn't mean he had a powerful, positive message. There's the whole thing. There, there's the whole, you can pause it. It's on screen share. Mind-blowing. Beyonce's impact and success has been widely recognized. A press release from Dayton's office stated, I recognize Hitler's success. It doesn't mean he's a role model. At least Singer first performed in Minnesota during the Verizon Ladies Tour in 04, and she returned in 09. The Declaration of Bay Day comes before the Formation World Tour. Thousands of fans have gathered at the stadium, but forecasts are showing that a storm threat. Uh, role model. Beyonce and Jay-Z have joined forces to talk about the cheating, of which she made an album about. She created a fake demon that comes out of her named Sasha. And the demon makes her do dirty things. Now, do I listen to Satanic? I've listened to some Slayer. I hate the, I don't like Arias vocals, but musically, they're all right. A little sloppy, whatever. I'll listen to death metal. It's fine. It is not a role model for a young girl who cannot separate fact from fiction. For those of you that do not get tortured with being forced to listen to this Trollops music like I do, Let's take a good look at what her role model is. Just one song here. This is this is partition. She's talking about driving in a car. She finds a guy at the bar, flaunts her ass at him. The man ain't never seen a booty like this. She's referring to herself as Yancey. I sneezed on the beat and the beat got sicker. Yancey all in your mouth like liquor. So, you know, flash your ass at a guy at the farm, put your tongue down his throat, then get in the car with him, and here is your role model lyrics. Driver, roll up the partition, please. I don't need you seeing Yancey on her knees. Yes, all little girls, you need to know what a blowjob is. It's, 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 it's a positive message. Took 45 minutes to get all dressed up, and we ain't even going to make it to this club. So be so sex-crazed that you do it in the back of a limo. He popped all my buttons and he ripped my blouse. He Monica lorinsky all on my gown. Now, first of all, blouse and gown don't rhyme if you know how to speak. But Monica Lewinsky, of course, who Bill Clinton gave a BJ, uh, who gave Bill Clinton a BJ, came on the a blue dress. That's what she's referring to. That's the role model. Whoa there, Daddy, did you bring a towel, you know, to wipe cum off with? Oh, baby, 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 we better slow it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just want to be the girl you like, the kind of girl you like. Oh, well, you need a towel to clean up a BJ in the back of a limo. That's the, that's the kind of girl he likes. Driver, roll up the partition past. Over there, I just saw the cameras flash. Handprints and footprints on the glass. 
hand prints and good grips all on my ass. And then this is part of one song, in which I don't think should be banned or censored or otherwise stopped. That is the role model for our children. So here we have what I'm sending, the Dunce Cap of the Month. I'm going to show you the hat in a minute. There's the award, friends. The Dunce Cap of the Month award. This Dunce Cap of the Month award goes to Governor Mark Dayton for thinking that prostitution, drugs, sex in the back of a limo, and going to clubs to have sex is what being a good role model for girls is all about. While it is true that our forms of art should be allowed to exist free, I should have written freely, of government intrusion, such as we saw from the vile PMRC, it is also true that government should not encourage the vile art as something to be praised. For not knowing this, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Uh, again, I'm not in favor of saying that adults can't listen to Beyonce. I'm not even in favor of saying that uh, teenagers can't or kids can't. I don't think it should be censored. It's fine. But you don't need to point it out as something that you should strive to be. You should raise your children with a modicum of common sense. Some kind of footing in morality. And then we all stray to some degree, of which I am guilty of many and probably will be again. Point is, you have to be rooted in something. You, we, you don't cheat, okay? I'm not a cheater. I don't, I don't encourage young girls to have sex in the back of a limousine with a stranger and put her tongue down his throat while he puts good grips on her ass. Maybe it's just me. Here's the award. I drew Beyonce, as you can see there. Uh, that's a decent one. X over the nipples. There's a, of course, says dunce. Here's what she says. Nothing says strong woman like staying with a cheater. Say nigga like I and my cheater husband do. And of course, lastly, little girls, I write songs about banging sex. That, along with the dunce cap that I screen shared you, is being sent to this brilliant governor. And you are listening to the correct views. You can help pay for this to get them sent to governors and to have a pair like I do and mail these out. You can help pay for it. The correct views of Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. I'm also on Patreon. You can see the, uh, the link for that in the description. And I put all the money that I get from the show to the show. So help me. And uh, I'll be out here doing what I do. Brought to you by Change Transportation. Do me a favor. Don't call Uber. Call Change Transportation. Let them know you heard about it from the correct views and you're going to get a huge savings. Good night. God bless.